We're asked to find the inverse. That's what this notation means. F to the negative 1 of x. It's not to the negative first power, though. That's, that's inverse notation. It's just confusing stuff with math. So that's not negative first power. That's the inverse of f. So what that means is like this is like your y variable. You want to switch your x and your y and then solve again for y. Okay, Because uh, an inverse, the domain and range have been switched. Okay, So often with these questions, I mean, this is the algebra stuff you have to do, but often you want to start by considering the domain of this function and the range. The domain of this function is negative 2 to infinity because I can't have a square root of a negative, right? So I quickly solve this in my head. x plus 2 needs to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, That has to be true or else we're square rooting a negative. So that's the domain. And the range, if you graph this in a graphing calculator, or if you know something about a square root graph, square roots start at 0. So in other words, the range are all the possible y values. The lowest thing you can get out of a square root is 0. So the range is 0 to infinity. Okay. So before we do the algebra stuff to find the algebraic representation of the inverse function, we know its domain and range. It's just the reverse. The domain of the inverse is 0 to infinity. The range is negative 2 to infinity. And I should say we should check to see if there's any other problems after we switch these up. But the domain and the range, we, we swap them. Just like over here, we swap the x and the y, the domain and the range variables. So square both sides to get rid of the square root. And remember, a square root, you can only have positive or zero come out of it. So you don't need to worry about the plus or minus symbol in this case. It's when you square root a squared variable that you need to worry about a plus or minus symbol. OK, so I squared both sides, got rid of the square root. I'm going to subtract both sides by 2. And so our inverse is x squared minus 2. Okay, This is like your y variable in your inverse. <clears throat> All right, and then look, if you were to graph this, it will look something like this. But that doesn't, that, that's not the actual inverse function because the inverse is restricted on its domain because the original function, the domain was, uh, sorry, the range was 0 to infinity. So the domain of the inverse can only be 0 to infinity. So that means when you write this function down, you, get, you have to say when x is greater than or equal to 0, because that's the domain we talked about at the beginning. So when you graph this thing, you actually only graph the part where x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay? So that's the domain, the range, and that's the algebraic representation.